When David Grush testified before Congress in July, he said that he had about 40 witnesses, right? He had a list. He said that they were part of the UFO crash retrieval program, the reverse engineering program, and he was willing to turn that list over to Congress. And there were some issues with that list and whatnot and him getting some of that, right? That's, that's what's on the table. Um, and just to be fair, there's also a hearing this Friday to discuss uh, some of that, which is great. But one of these witnesses has come forward and provided some details that I find quite interesting. I'm going to share them with you. So stick around. This is actually going to be a two-parter. So make sure you come back tomorrow to find out more about the story because I'm about to unfold, unpeel, let's say, quite the onion here. Um, if you're new to the channel and you like content like this, hit that subscribe button. We put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. And of course, hit that like button, y'all. That really helps out the videos, and y'all are great on that. So thank you so much, vetters. Um, and of course, comment down below, y'all. I cannot wait to read the comments on this one. All right, let's just dive in, and I'll explain as we go. There's a Facebook group, all right? And in this Facebook group, this was posted. I'll, get, I'll, I'll dive into more about the Facebook group in a second. Let me read this. This is from Eric Davis, okay? I'll dive into who Eric Davis is. You might already recognize the name and who this is. You saw the thumbnail, but, but, but let me just read this message. So he's responding to a question that said Grush, that Grush heard rumors. And I'm about to show you this post of where this came from, too, because that hasn't been shown. So we'll, whatever, we'll get into this. I interacted with Dave Grush from 2020 to 2022 as part of my job. I was one of his classified IGIC whistleblower complaint witnesses because he got the breadcrumbs from me and a close colleague on where to find the UAP CR program, crash retrieval program. Then he also comments again, okay, here. So David Gersh, so David Grush heard no rumors. He used his access to the special security system to locate and talk to the industry crash retrieval program personnel face to face. All right, that is very important, y'all, okay? So let's just review this, what he's saying, right? He's saying, again, he at, interacted with Dave Grush from 2020 to 2022 as part of his job, and he was one of his 40, you know, about 40, he might have said over 40, whistleblower complaint witnesses, right? And that he gave, he gave breadcrumbs and another person, a close colleague of Eric Davis, gave breadcrumbs to David Grush where to find the UAP crash retrieval program. So what did he give him? I don't know. What are those breadcrumbs? Who knows? So David Grush, he heard no rumors, right? David Grush then used his own access to the special security system to locate and talk to the industry people, right? To these personnel face to face, right? The people that, were, that said they were working on these programs, he went and talked to them. So that's interesting, right? So, okay, let's dive into this. Um, where is this coming from? Again, we'll get into Eric Davis in the Facebook group. This was commented because of this post in this Facebook group from theoretical physicist Jack Sarfati, right? He had made a comment and someone posted his comment on there and this Eric Davis was responding to this post. And this is, this is also crazy. This is what Jack Sarfati claims. He claims, I confirm David Grush's core story and I know of at least one intact saucer in U.S. military possession, and I have smoking gun evidence of live NHI. This is from a firsthand active military source who read me in because of his belief that my physics explains both the propulsion and the high strangeness reported by Valet, Davis, and others. Davis, he's refer referring to Eric Davis. However, I do not have permission to give any details now. You just gave details. You literally just hit, you just threw out a lot of details, actually. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, you just said, you know, they, you know, the US military is in possession of one saucer. You have smoking gun evidence of a live non human intelligence, right? An alien being. You're saying you have evidence of that. 
And you're saying you have a firsthand active military source who read you in because of his belief that the physics that this person is, you know, working in is, is there's something to it. Um, and then he says, however, I do not have permission to give any details now, except those details. So I don't know. I mean, that's just crazy. You know, I don't know who, you know, we've covered Jack Sarfati, right? That's the guy who got the phone call from the alien in the future. Okay. I'll put a link to that video too. Um, now who is Eric Davis? Who is Eric Davis? Who is this guy? You might have heard of the Wilson Davis memo. I've made two videos on that. One kind of a deep dive into it. And then another where I just read the entire thing. That's it. So if you just want to kick back and listen to it, I just read it. That's all. Nothing else. I just start reading and it finishes and that's the whole video. So because there's a lot in there. But this is kind of one of the juiciest parts at the very end. Um, where, again, if you want to know more about that, go read about it. It's just too much for this video. But this is something that's said, right? Um EWD is Eric Davis, okay? And this is Thomas Wilson um, from the Wilson Davis memos, okay? He's an admiral, right, military. Um, he's asking if he talked to this person, right? And Wilson tells him, UFOs are real, so-called alien abductions, not real, right? And then he was told to drop the matter. Again, I'll put links to that so you can go find out more about it. Um, Davis has pretty much confirmed and other people have said he's confirmed. I think I made a video about it that that got confirmed that he wrote that. That doesn't mean what's in it is real, but that he wrote it. Um, so anyway, Eric Davis is, you know, he's a scientist. He's worked on all of these different programs. I'm about to play y'all a clip from uh, the basement office of Eric Davis here. All right, which is just quite interesting. Uh, to say the least. Um, and yeah, he's a scientist, okay? And he's worked on different programs, right? OSAP, ATIP. There's just a lot to cover, y'all. So I hope if you you, you know these acronyms. Um, if you don't, I will put some links so you can find out more information about each of those. But basically, they're just United States, right? Pentagon-led programs uh, to study UFOs, right? Um, and... Eric Davis just involved in a lot of different stuff, but you know, most famously that, that Wilson memo. Right. And I mean, they talk about a lot of stuff in there. Right. So look, here's a, here's just a short clip to kind of give you this person talking and you can hear him if you don't know who he is. Um, and I thought this was interesting and just Stephen Greenstreet starts to become a part of this story too. So, and that's actually what my part two is, uh, for tomorrow, but we'll get in, more more of that later and again i am going to get into this facebook group give me just a second was all sap and atip did they coexist at the same time uh pretty much atip came before osap because of the nimitz encounter so almost almost simultaneous a little uh, atip came a little bit before but they coordinated and they both ended in 2012 no a no atip never ended atip never ended it's still going on today. Yep. Who runs but it? Not in that name. <laughs> oh, they changed the name. Change names, change location, change leadership. So oh, what's the new? Goes on. What's the new name? I can't tell you that. <laughs> so he just he knows a lot of stuff, right? He's worked on some of these programs, um, and he's. An interesting guy. He's kind of was hard to find interviews for. You know, he's got very high security clearance. And he's worked on a lot of stuff. And I'm going to put a link to this, too, so you can watch this. It's a 14-minute video. He um, he explains a lot. It's, it's quite interesting. And the other video that I'm going to link to of me discussing the Wilson memo, I found a video that got deleted off of YouTube of Stephen Greenstreet interviewing Eric Davis about the Wilson memo. Right. And pretty much implying that it's real, but it got taken down. They they took it off the New York Post, you know, YouTube, but I was still able to find it um, online, you know, through some archive or whatever. And I showed it in that video. So it's interesting. Um, but he's an interesting guy. Right. 
Um, and again, before we get into the Facebook group, I'm going to show you one more clip of a story about Eric Davis, this guy right here, okay, who, again, is saying he gave the breadcrumbs to David Grush of where to go find this UFO program. So this is Stephen Greenstreet on Skinwalker Ranch. Um, I'm not, you know, from one of Stephen Greenstreet's New York Post sort of exposés, if you will. We'll get into more of that in just a minute. You may recall an episode in which one of the, the former researchers here was in this area, and he was looking through a night vision uh, piece of equipment, not unlike the one I showed you back at the command center, NVG. He's looking, he's transfixed, he, he feels that he cannot bring his arms down. He's watching something, and he's hearing a voice. This is Eric Davis? Yes. And it's a warning. Yes. What does the voice say? We are watching you. We are watching, right. And, you know, I asked him, you know, could that, could that have been um, something external? And his answer was unambiguous. He said, absolutely not. It was in my head. So, I don't know. So, this guy says, you know, he's he's got potentially the beings, entities telling him that, you know, we're watching you, um, which to be fair, that would be terrifying. If I heard <laughs> this voice in my head that, you know, wasn't there, I only got one voice in my head. Um, that would be terrifying, right? But just to give you a roundabout idea of who this guy is, right? Um, granted, again, he's very smart, very well educated. He is part of he holds a very high security clearance and he works with the government now. And OK, so I can't actually show you. OK, how do I do this? OK, here we go. This is what I'm going to do. So I can't show you the I can't go to Facebook and show you this group, the UFO phenomena, a serious look. That's what it's called here. Let me show it. This is the most unusual Facebook group. I can't show it because they said they don't like photos and stuff screenshots going out and look what somebody did on twitter they took a screenshot and put it out but again they didn't shut down the facebook page it's quite odd it's it's public it publicly visible anybody can see this facebook group okay it only has a couple thousand members but i'll be honest there's a ton of people going there now to join and again it's super unusual the ufo phenomena a serious look right and Eric Davis is on there just commenting in different posts. I looked, he's one of the top contributors in this group. Now, granted, you have to join the group. It's a private group in the sense that the, the post is stuff and you have to join. So I joined. They let me in. Super easy. Answer a couple of questions. Boom, I was in in minutes. You know, but Eric Davis is on there just answering all these crazy questions. And he's got a Facebook pro profile. And to be honest, at first I thought, is this real? Is this fake? Because I remember Lou Elizondo saying, hey, I'm not on Facebook. I don't have a Facebook account. And there was this big Facebook account pretending to be Lou Elizondo, right? And Lou Elizondo was like, I try to get it shut down. I can't. So whatever. The guy's doing it. Um, but I thought, oh, is this one of those things? So I looked into it. Um, I actually, he's connected like through Facebook and family right and it says like his son and stuff so i went and looked at his son because he lives in texas i mean eric davis is literally an hour and a half from where i live that's where he's that's where he's at he's in waco right it's it's public um and he's worked in austin right i mean i'm in texas so i looked and his son is in austin and i mean you see him commenting to each other and stuff and the son and i actually have a mutual friend with the son in austin which is crazy um of Eric Davis. So I thought, okay, this is real, right? Cause I know that person like, okay, th this is real then. So this is a real guy, you know, this is actually Eric Davis, right? Commenting. And he said some other stuff on there, man. You, you, uh, you know, I'm not going to show it cause I'm not going to show any screenshots that didn't get sort of smuggled out already. All right. But go feel free. I'm going to put a link to the, to the group again, it's public, you know, join it. If you want to see what's in there and, you can interact with Eric Davis straight up and it's interesting, but he's just like revealing all kinds of stuff. He talked about disclosure. Um, I've seen him talking about other stuff and that's quite interesting. He talked about Sarfati and said some stuff about him kind of talking, 
down to him, you know, like, hey, man, that, that guy doesn't know anything. You know, he's not read in. He doesn't have clearance. He doesn't know. It's <laughs> I just so confusing. And guess who's in this Facebook group as well? Stephen Greenstreet. I mean, Stephen, if if you go to this post right here of these this comment that I'm showing you and you keep going down, Stephen Greenstreet also comments and says, yeah, this sounds about right. And he shared, Stephen Greenstreet shared this whole thing on Twitter. Right. I'm about to show you all all that. But I thought that was so fascinating. Like, what's going on in here? And there's other people, other content creators, UFO content creators I see in there. But Eric Davis just is randomly commenting and stuff and just dropping this kind of information. I don't know. I mean, that it just seems odd. I don't know. I just found that odd. This Facebook group is odd. Because Stephen Greentree is in there like tagging him on different stuff. And I don't know. Like, what? They haven't banned anybody. You know, they haven't. Stephen Greenstreet still in there. And my video tomorrow that I'm doing, part two, is all about Stephen Greenstreet and an interaction I had with him on there. And he didn't know who I was, even though I was using my public Facebook, you know, but he just doesn't know that I'm with Vetted. And I got to be honest, he was pretty shocked, I think, um, because we had an interaction. Then he just, as soon as I told him who I was, it stopped. But I found out some very pretty interesting information about Stephen Greenstreet's work at the New York Post. And granted, it's a public, you know, Facebook group. He was quite open with it. Maybe he said that before, but it got me thinking about Stephen Greenstreet, right? And about who Stephen Greenstreet used to be. You know, about the videos he used to put out. So this tweet is him talking about the Dr. Eric Davis stuff. Just so y'all know, I didn't post that stuff on Twitter. That's where I got it from. And that's how I found it and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to link to it all so y'all can check it out on your own. But I often hear this. Like, remember the basement office had Stephen Greenstreet and Nick Pope? And, you know, I interviewed Nick Pope, actually, back earlier in 2023 at the beginning of Edit. And one of my biggest regrets was not asking him about Stephen Greenstreet and why the basement office stopped. Right. What happened? Um. Because remember that show, The Basement Office? Like, that was awesome. For me, I was, when I watched that show, like, I was new to UFO stuff. Like, just not new, just refreshed, you know, kind of like, oh, yeah, okay, this is cool. Like, I was in. But I watched it just as general entertainment and thought it was interesting and fascinating. I was a big fan of the show, and it grew and grew. And, and you often hear now, man, Basement Office was awesome. And if you go, they have millions of views, comments, you know, whatever. It grew Stephen Greenstreet's Twitter account, you know, all of his stuff, his Reddit karma, you, you know, he has a lot to attribute to that. It, 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 you know, guaranteed him a nice spot at New York Post. Hey, look, this idea you presented to us, it's taken off. You know, this is something, right? And then something happened. Something changed. And he became a different person, right? And... My video tomorrow is not to bash Stephen Greenstreet. My video tomorrow is going to be my message to him. Maybe we can get the old Greenstreet back. I'm going to put out an olive branch because I've had my own issues with Stephen Greenstreet. I made my own video about him. Kind of, he got, you know, I just thought he got angry and he was kind of trolling everybody online and he's always very kind of, cl you know, doing kind of clownish stuff. But I respected his earlier videos, right, and his stuff. And, and honestly, some of the reporting he still does. If I just get a link and fact, I could go look at facts on my own. I don't need the other, the jabs and the this and the that that he adds to it, right, and all the disagreements. And he spends a lot of time on UFO stuff. But the information that I found out about him, I find it odd that he still is considering the information I found out. So I'm going to dig into that tomorrow and tell you guys all about it. Um, and I promise you, it's going to be a good video, but I got to think on it. I want to make sure I make, you know, 
I want to try to get Green Street on here and do an interview with them. And I've got a whole idea, a whole proposal, a whole plan. Um, and I want to see because I think his mindset can help us. But he's got to get rid of the idea that, like, we don't have some sort of crash craft or at least that possibility because nobody knows one way or the other. You can't say, now we don't have nothing and they're all crazy and lunatics. That's not true. Come on. What are we talking about? You also can't say everyone who's come out and everyone's telling the truth and everything's right. You know, that's also not true. This is worth investigating. Right? That's why we have this channel here. I love covering this stuff. I do think we have something. I'm following David Grush's story. Our government is very acts very suspicious about this. I mean, those are clues. So I've got some stuff that I want to, you know, Stephen Greenstreet could be persuaded to come back and be an ally in this fight for the truth to get us, right? Maybe he had some issues with some people. Maybe we can throw out some olive branches. Maybe we can come together. But I don't know. I want to start off 2024 in a good way, and I think this is a positive way. So, again, I just remember those Basement Office episodes, man. They were awesome. They really were. Those were awesome episodes. So, anyway, we'll see you guys on tomorrow's episode. I can't wait to hear what you all think about Eric Davis, him being one of the witnesses, which is huge, y'all. That's huge news, right? And what he said, right, he's saying him and a colleague— Gave the breadcrumbs to David Grush. That's how this all started. And from there, David Grush started to get more, right? So is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. Do you like Eric Davis? Do you trust him? How does that news affect you? So can't wait to read the comments, y'all. So exciting. Um, thank y'all again for supporting the channel. Do appreciate it. Uh, again, if you've watched this far already, please hit that like button. That would really help us out. And of course, We'll see you guys tomorrow, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Don't forget, y'all, every day's a gift, Vetters. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace.